لهم عذاب الحريق Hamakashwaru moomin firhinuna moomin anghinun din ekki baakuruma aniyadi undaguko din thawbaanu ini hum dannaashe fahe eorena narakhaga azaab hotte adi eorena anda anda hunna alifaanuge azaab hotte Security forces used tear gas to disperse NDP protesters who converged to the MMA building. Supporters of former President Mohammad Nasheed gathered at the party's house after an NDP meeting at Tarbarge. Led by the former President Nasheed, NDP supporters walked walk towards the MMA area, saying that the current Moldovan government is a military government. Our reporters on the scene tell us that several parliament members of NDP are under custody. Our reporters say that MPs in class Fahmi, Maria Didi, Mohammad Shifa, Muhammad Ghassam and several other MPs are among the detained. A report has also said that Musa Malik is being treated at the hospital for injuries. Scores of people have reportedly been injured in the clashes with the security forces, but at the moment we are unable to confirm any numbers. President Mohammad Wahid Hassan Manik says he is working on establishing a national unity government. He made a statement while speaking to the press today. President Muhammad Wahid said a new cabinet will be devised soon. He said the new cabinet will emphasize a unity government with parties across the parliament. He said the government had invited all political parties to contribute to his endeavor and said the government has held talks with former President Muhammad Nasheed's Moldovan Democratic Party. President Wahid said the new cabinet will be announced after parliament approval. Responding to allegations that former President Nasheed was under house arrest, President Wahid denied these allegations. Responding to allegations about a list of the Nasheed administration officials who are barred from leaving the country, President Wahid said he learned of such a list last night and had ordered to annul the list. He also assured that the judiciary will be free from government influence. He said that his key priorities included the restoration of public confidence in democratic institutions by upholding the rule of law and uncompromising adherence to the constitution. 
emphasizing the importance of due process, upholding of fundamental constitutional rights and rule of law, the President called on all parties to ensure that the Constitution, governing laws and principles of democracy are respected. With the cooperation of all political parties, the President is confident of attaining democratic aspirations of the people. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon voices hope, stating that the resignation of President Nasheed and appointment of his deputy as the new leader will help to peacefully end the ongoing political crisis in the Maldives. In a statement issued by his spokesperson, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon expressed his strong hope that handover of power which has been announced as a constitutional step to avoid further violence and instability will lead to the peaceful resolution of political crisis that has polarized the country in recent months. Ban called on all Maldivians to refrain from violence and engage constructively in tackling the challenges facing the country, adding that he hoped the Maldivians will be able to build on the important gains it has recently made in establishing democracy and the rule of law. In the statement, Secretary General acknowledged the important contributions of President Nasheed, the country's first democratically elected president, to the establishment of democracy in the Maldives and his role in raising international awareness of dangers of climate change and rising seas. Later this week, Assistant Secretary General Oscar Fernandez Terenko will lead a United Nations political mission to the Maldives to help the country deal with its recent tensions. Fernandez Terenko is slated to meet with government officials, opposition leaders and civil society representatives. Universal Health Insurance provider Arsene that Private Limited says 20 private clinics have requested to provide their services under the scheme. The company says they are now analyzing if the clinics are in par with the set standards. Arsene the Private Limited says they are working on allowing as many private clinics into the scheme as soon as possible. The company opened for the clinics to register under the scheme on the 11th of last month. Additionally, 25 pharmacies have applied to be included under the scheme. The the company says when authorizing pharmacies into the scheme, they will consider pharmacies operating in islands where the arts and the services are not available at the moment. The company aspires to lessen the difficulties faced in consulting and prescription of medicine once these new clinics and pharmacies are included under the scheme. As in the private limited was inaugurated on the 1st of January under the government's affordable and quality health care pledge. Under us and the services, each and every Maldivian with a valid national identity card can obtain free medical services worth 100,000 rupiah per year from the health service providers under the health service corporation some private clinics and selected hospitals in India and Sri Lanka. We'll be bringing you the details of the ongoing protests as they come. Now we'll look at the news. It says the President Dr. Mohammad Wahi today meets the High Commissioner of India, Daniel Shivar Mule. Discussions at the meeting were focused on the close bilateral relations between two countries and ways to enhance these relations. The High Commissioner offered his confidence of Indian government's full support to the government of the Maldives. President Dr. Mohammad Wahid today meets the British High Commissioner accredited to the Maldives, John Rankin. During the meeting held at the President's office, President and the High Commissioner discussed ways to further strengthen and extend the close relations between the two countries. The High Commissioner also assured President Wahid of the British government's full support to the Maldives. A survey begins to identify and verify the conditions of the historical sites in Formula. The survey is being conducted by Formula Atoll Council along with the National Heritage Department. Formula Atoll Council says the survey was initiated upon request by the council to verify the conditions of officially listed and unlisted heritage sites in Ireland. Council said the survey's aim is to establish ways of technical assistance. Formula Atoll Council says during the survey they will give priority to finding ways of immediately establishing how Kedera Mosque in the island can be maintained in a sustainable way. The Island Council said they are giving priority to this particular mosque because this is a site which is frequently mentioned in all historical doc documents and also because it, rapid, it is rapidly uh, deteriorating with age that's getting destroyed in the process. At our Council's President Abdullah Mohammed Didi said in addition 